Good morning. I'm Sandy Lee. I'm the project leader for building Reliance. We're building a 1-6 scale model of Reliance, the biggest and tallest of all the America's Cup boats. We soon found that we weren't just building a model, but we were building a research vessel. We were seeing new ways to actually see the museum, and we were on this wonderful journey that was taking us to where we didn't know. So let me take you on our journey just so you can sort of understand where we've been and I think it'll also help you as you go through the museum understand what a beautiful and great museum this is. There were sort of these moments to get to that wondrous V8 moment where you go, oh my goodness, what is this? The first is in building Reliance is how big this boat really was. To give you just a couple dimensions, the boom is 115 feet long. She stands 200 feet from water to tip of her topsail yard. That's too tall to fit under the Newport Bridge. You look at the rest of the boats in the museum and you go, oh my goodness, these are very different, and they're metal. In our case, it's made up of dissimilar metals. There's 205,000 pounds of lead in the keel, attached to uh, a very lightly built steel web frame with longitudinal stringers, Tobin bronze hull plating, and aluminum plating on deck, all very thin. And um, that in itself is sort of a car battery in water, so if they had only understood, maybe they could have had the all-electric powered boat, but uh, they didn't. This, And then, of course, when you look at Reliance, and you understand that she is extreme in the most extreme, uh, to get around the Sawanica rule, the measurement rule, uh, and be a faster boat, what they're really doing is they're taking a given 90-foot water line and trying to find out how to make a faster boat by building these huge, huge long overhangs so that in a five-knot wind, she heels over and she's 135 or 130 feet on the water line and her max theoretical speed goes from, let's say, 13 knots to 18 knots. To do that, you need a bigger engine, which is the sails, of course. And so there's this huge spread of 16,200 square feet of canvas on Reliance. And all of that has to be kept upright by a counterweight, the 205,000 pounds of lead in the keel. So what he's doing in building this structural overhang is um, he is building an ultralight hull to put the weight traditionally in the hull and the keel and building an ultralight rig and sail plan uh, so that he doesn't have to put more weight in the keel. It's interesting from us from a structural and a material standpoint, we're seeing uh, 1903 being the Wright Brothers flyer. We're seeing the same wing uh, structural pattern if you will, as being put in this boat. She's longitudinally framed. There's only 21 ribs, the whole 144 feet length on deck. The strength is in the longitudinals. It's also backed by these very thin plates that were an eighth of an inch thick at the ends, growing to about a quarter of an inch thick at, at midships at the chain plates. Um, so in essence, she's got that monocoque metal uh, structure that you see later on the, uh, the planes that uh, were sort of the, the World War II, and you see the light longitudinal frames that you would see in a wing, uh, all supported by a tremendous set of diagonal bracing inside this boat. And all the while, he's still being a Yankee because in our plans, uh, we see that he is saying make the uh, diagonal bracing out of uh, uh, torpedo bo boiler tubes. So um, he's, he's not going to spend anything that he doesn't have to. He'll go out in the back shop and see what he's got around. It's very easy to say that uh, this is, uh, as you go through the museum, a journey in uh, see the wonderful engineering development technology uh, and to focus on that and add to it the entrepreneurship and, uh, and all the uh, innovation that's going on. You can take that focus. But I think what Reliance is also teaching us as this research vessel is that it is equally important that we look at this in the context of people, 
culture, history, the place of this in the Industrial Revolution, how it sort of led to offshoots into spar making, boat building, and uh, sail making that still are around Bristol today that have their roots as embryonic businesses here after Harrisoft Manufacturing Company closed. So there's, there's this wonderful context. It actually became much more uh, in focus when our, our crew started uh, restoring an old uh, Harrisoft steam engine from 1900. And you suddenly were putting it in context that this was uh, for a launch, but it, it was also for naval launches that went on the first metal uh, naval boats, that there were things going on that he was building a blockade runner for the Cuban uh, uh, rebels in 1875, I think it was. But this is at a point where the US Navy couldn't challenge Spain. And there's a whole mess of stuff going on here that he is very much into the birth of the modern US Navy. And so you'll see some of those messages. So there's a historical context to it. Uh, from a, a people context, uh, for example, Reliance has the first American woman to race in the America's Cup as one of the crew members, Hope Goddard Islin. So um, a lot of things to really excite a whole mess of people here. And I think the final message that Reliance was was really giving us is the beauty in the designs, the beauty in the boats, and it's a whole different context as you walk through here.